Good morning, ma'am. What's that? Can we have pamphlets? Sure, ma'am. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. I'm going to give you one of these, too. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Thank you. There you go. So what's the comparison you're making between the whole abortion issue and slavery? What's the comparison? Yeah. Well, back in 1857, they passed a law called mm -hmm. the Dread Scott Law. Yeah. Okay. A seven to two decision saying African Americans were not people. They were less than people. Which gave people the right to own them, buy them, sell them, rape them, kill them, whatever they wanted. They were just property. If they ran away, they were able to be brought back, beaten, okay? Mm -hmm. This is what happens when men decide who is worthy and who is not, okay? God's word is very clear that we are all equal in the eyes of God. We are all created by the hand of God and the image of God with a plan and a purpose from God. And nobody has the right to say, you're not worthy, you are. I'm gonna kill you, you are not. Okay, that is men. Back in the 40s, Nazi Germany, they passed laws that said the Jews, they weren't people. They weren't worthy of life, they were vermin. And that was what allowed them to kill six million of them. Okay, we're not even counting the other five million who were homosexuals, mentally handicapped, who that they decided were not worthy of life. That they were just parasites, they were just feeders, they weren't people. Okay. Now, do you know what happened in Nazi Germany when uh, General Eisenhower, General Bradley, and uh, General Patton liberated Auschwitz? The first thing that they did was they went to all the communities, all the surrounding communities, and they made every one of those people go into the camp and look at all the bodies. Because all the people were, eh, you know, it's happening over there. Mm -hmm. It's not a big concern. They're killing people, but, you know, no big deal. So they made them, every one of them, go past the piles of bodies. And then after that, they made them bury them. Okay? And then they, you know, tried to prosecute as many as they could. But out of the one and a half million Jews that were killed out of Hungary, out of the 3,000 people that were doing it, only you know a handful oh, thank you, were prosecuted. Oh, this one? Oh, yeah. oh, I also want that pink one too because <laughs> my favorite color is pink. Okay. Yeah. And that's what we're here shining a light upon. See, this is what happens when men decide who is worthy of life and who is not. God's word is very clear. Okay. Yeah. It is very clear on who is worthy and who isn't. Yeah. God's word and science are also very clear on when life begins. Yeah. Okay. When a life is conceived in the womb, no matter how much you try, that life will not come out as a dog. It will not come out as a giraffe. It will not come out as an elephant. It is a human being. Okay. And each and every one of those human beings, God knew before he even formed them in the womb. And unfortunately, there are many people today who don't really care. I mean, we got people holding signs, okay? He, he's against, he's for abortion and gay people, okay? Now, if there was a gay gene, you know how many gay people would be aborted before they were born? Okay. Do you know how many babies are killed just because they're females? All right, but, all right, but these are women over here who thinks it's actually a fundamental woman's right and choice to kill another person. Nobody has the right. Only God can create a life and only God has the right to take that life. Now there is murder and death in the Bible, but that is called righteous killing. God wiped out entire nations for sacrificing their children. If you read the Old Testament, the, the uh, Jews were involved with uh, the locals. They got interspersed. They started sacrificing to the god of Molech, okay? They would bring their child as soon as their child was born and lay it on the scalding hands of Molech and it would be burned to death. And they did this for a blessing upon their lives, their crops, their, their families, all this stuff. And they were destroyed because They were wiped out. Okay. So your comparison is that 
abortion is likened to slavery because it is taking away people's fundamental definition of life. Well, it's it's denying it's denying you who you are. Okay, as a slave in, in the 1800s. You were not a person. You were only three-fifths of a person. That was what the Supreme Court ruled. And here, with Roe v. Wade, they ruled that babies weren't people. They were just choices. They were privacy concerns. Yeah. Okay? And, you know, unfortunately, abortion will be overturned. All right? Whether the, the nation has to be wiped out or whatever. Yeah. Okay? But we are here doing what God's word says, Ephesians 5.11, that we are to have nothing to do with the unfruitful deeds of darkness, but rather we are to expose them, and we are to expose them to the light. We don't just come here. I mean, we're here at this school. We'll be here for the next few weeks, probably to the end of the year, uh, end of the school year. But we go, we've gone to other schools. We go to different schools. Yeah. We're at Independence, okay, and we, we've been to, there's only a few more schools left in Frisco, mm -hmm. but that's not all we do. We also go to the churches, because the churches aren't even in support of stopping abortion, okay? Most of the churches, do you know that, that Planned Parenthood has a research institute that, that works for them called the Guttmacher Institute, okay? And according to Planned Parenthood's own statistics, because people have to fill out paperwork before they kill their child. 68% of the people that are murdering their children are church-going Christians. Okay? We stood out this past Sunday at a pro-choice church, big church, where they think it is okay for a woman to choose. And that goes against God's word, and we're going to expose that. We also go to the town squares. We also go to events, and we also go to the abortion clinics. But that is the last line. That is the final line. By the time the people get there, they have pretty much had everybody, including their pastors and their friends and their families, comfort them with the fact that it's okay. God will forgive you. But God's word is very clear. Yes, he forgives sin. Okay? What would you say to somebody who's not a fundamental Christian about the issue of abortion? Well, I'm talking very straight. Okay? These things apply whether you believe in God or not. Okay? See, if you, if you don't believe in God, it doesn't matter. Okay? Because you're still going to be judged. Okay? And you still are a murderer if you kill your child. And unfortunately, God can for, I mean, fortunately, God can forgive you for that. But His Word also says that if you know the truth, and you still continue to go... You know how many times I hear people say, I already prayed, God said He'd forgive me, so I'm going to kill my child. God's word says that if you use his grace and his mercy and his forgiveness as a license to sin against him, he doesn't know you. You might think he does. Many of these people, we had two guys over here. Uh, they're not there now. Okay, two guys, Catholics, who's over here saying they support abortion. You know, you can say what you want, but God isn't going to ask you your opinion. We are saved by the faith, by the grace of God alone, through faith in Jesus Christ alone. And it is not by anything I can do. I can't work my way to heaven. I can't be good enough. Because if I could actually do something that was good enough, then I would be able to stand before God and say, you didn't have to send your son. I was good enough. But see, if you turn from that, the other thing is true. Jesus said, it is the truth that will set you free. And that's what we're here to bring, the truth. And that's what we're showing, the truth. That's what you're going to find here that you've been lied to by the, what you've been taught. All right? It is the truth that will set you free, but it is also the truth that will condemn you. My name is Matt. Thank you. Caitlin. Caitlin, yeah. here, look us up on Facebook. Yeah, I will. We are the, that is ab uh, abolishhumanabortion.com and Project Frontlines, but we are the Abolitionist Society of Little Elm and Frisco. Look us up. Thank you very much. What's your name? Andy. Andy? Yeah. It's nice meeting you. Thank you for speaking. God bless you guys. Have a good day.